feel like a pumpkin in this sweater. Like, it's big, it's orange. It's just kind of an orange, comfy knit blob, and I love it. I feel like a pumpkin. I felt like it was perfect for fall, and therefore perfect for this video. channel Laura's Little Library and today I'm going to be doing the finally fall book tag. I am really excited. I love fall as I'm sure many of us do. But yeah, so I thought I'd do the finally fall book tag to kind of keep us going. Last week I did do some my fall TBR spreading all the books that I want to read this fall so feel free to check that out. That'll also be in the description. But now let's get into the tag. I've gotten the questions on my phone here so if I'm looking down it's because I'm looking at the questions here um, so in fall the air is crisp and clear name a book with a vivid setting and I'm gonna go with a book I just finished and the setting was very very vivid and that would be Ace of Spades now this is a dark academia that I literally just finished a day or so ago and it's it's insane the atmosphere is very vivid because it takes place at this very prestigious prep school and the school itself is just eerie because the outside looks old but the inside is like modern but still like dark academia so like big wide dark oak double doors um marble this and old that and huge like ugh. the school was vivid and the other places that we go to sometimes if we go to a character's house or a neighborhood you you know exactly where you are and you can picture it but the school itself just oh my word and this happens within the first couple weeks of school so it is very much fall time school is starting so it just oh it was the perfect atmosphere vivid setting second question is nature is beautiful very true but also dying oh that's so sad Name a book that is beautifully written but also deals with a heavy topic like loss or grief. Grief. So for this one, I've chosen a book that isn't super fall, it isn't very autumn, but I did read it. It was the last summer book that I read before I started diving into fall reads, and that's Beach Read by Emily Henry. This is a beautifully written book. I was laughing through it. I had so much fun. But one of the main characters, her father, has just passed away. And through that, she has learned that her father had a whole other life with a whole other woman, and she had no idea. So, uh, she actually ends up going to his cabin up in Michigan. Michigan! Um, and she meets her neighbor, and they are both writers, and they decide to challenge each other to read, or to write books in each other's genre. So... She is dealing with living in the cottage in the house that her dad lived in with his mistress as she is grieving his loss while also trying to write a best-selling book before her neighbor can. Beautiful book, so incredibly wonderful, but yeah. Not, like I said, not super fall, but like, it's almost fall. Question number three, fall is back to school season. Share a nonfiction book that taught you something new. I don't read nonfiction. I don't remember when the last time I read a nonfiction book is, so I cannot tell you. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't learn anything from something I didn't read. So, yeah. Sorry. Uh, we'll just move on to question number four now, shall we? Number four, in order to keep warm, it's good to spend time with people that we love. Name a fictional family, household, friend group that you would like to be a part of. So this is a very interesting answer, because um, the friend group I have chosen is not one that I think I could actually live with. Well, it's definitely a group I would love to hang out and be a part of, but I don't know <laughs> how they would react to me, because I am boring. But I'm going to go with the, the little found family from We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal. We have our main character, who's a huntress who secretly goes out into this dangerous woodsy area and hunts in order to keep her village alive. I would love to hang out with her, her best friend Yasmin, and her little sister Lana. Um, but the real 
found fam. So she, her best friend and her are like sisters. Um, but she, through the course of the book, uh, ends up banding together with the Prince of Death, who is just the prince, who is also an assassin, and then the general of the army of the country that they live in, and a couple other people who are all badasses, and they are so fun to listen to, amazing found family, but since they're all like these warrior badasses, I don't think I would actually fit in, but I think it would be really fun to hang out with them a little bit, maybe not when they're trying to defeat an evil thing and bring magic back, but you know, just in general. But honestly, I think I'd fit in more with like Yasmin, her best friend, and Lana, her little sister, so. <laughs> that's, that's my answer though. All right, what are we on? Question number five. Yeah, the colorful leaves are piling up on the ground. It shows a pile of fall colored spines. Okay, let's grab some books. Okay, here are a few. I definitely have more on my shelf that could go into the stack, but I didn't want it to get too big. Um, these are just kind of like orangey based, a little bit of red and yellow. So I'm using uh, With the Fire and High by Elizabeth Acevedo, Star Daughter by Shveta Fakrar, Verity by Joelle Charbonneau, and The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern, just to kind of get the red, the orange, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of orange and yellow. So. This, I say it's a pretty full stack, don't you think? Now I gotta set them down somewhere. That's fun. I always love those ones. Number six. Fall is the perfect time for some storytelling by the fireside. Share a book wherein someone is telling a story. So, for this one I've chosen... I didn't... I was looking through my shelves and I don't have too many where that's the case. Um, but I had a couple, but I felt like the best one to go with was You Had Me at Ola by Alexis Daria. And I went with this one because while there isn't like a character telling a story per se, these two are telenovela slash soap opera stars and throughout the story you get to read the scenes that they're doing as they're doing them. And so it kind of feels like they're telling a whole other story. They're telling the story of the TV show as well as the like actual story of the characters or the actors. So I went with this one um, because it has a different kind of storytelling. So I thought that would be really fun. Number seven, the nights are getting darker. Share a dark, creepy read. So again, I'm going to go with one that I recently read because I've been recently reading a lot, especially like fall themed thriller. And one of my favorites so far still is House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. This is not too long. It was the first book I read for my reading extravaganza. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I will have all of the videos that have come out for it down below so that you can see what I'm talking about. Um, and this was super creepy, super atmospheric, not too long. I read it so quickly and I loved it. It, it, get, it gets pretty dark, but not too much in a way... It, it, it gets decently dark, but it like very gradually puts you in to the darkness. So it's not like a, a like a two to a hundred kind of thing. You're you're gradually getting there, so you're like adjusting a little bit. So then, by the time it gets really dark, you didn't quite notice how dark it got. But yeah, I enjoyed it. I definitely recommend this to anyone who's looking for a good spooky read. The days are getting colder. Name a short, heartwarming read that could warm up somebody's cold, rainy day. This one, I believe I mentioned last year, and I mention every year during fall season, and so do many other people, but that's because it's true. It works really well. And that is the Tea Dragon Society books by Katie O'Neill. There are three of them out. I have all three, and I have read all three. Very short, so heartwarming definitely brightens up anybody and everybody's day I made everyone in my family read this even though like no one else in my family really sits down and reads but I definitely made them read this and they they agreed it was wonderful and heartwarming because it's the idea that you have these dragons where if you harvest the leaves off of like their heads and their antlers you can make delicious tea with it and then with the tea you actually get little glimpses of like their memories and their emotions and it's just so cute and heartwarming and the art is amazing and each one of the three books is a different season so this is spring there is summer and fall and the fall one is definitely beautiful colors fall aesthetic 
highly recommend all three. You can read them very quickly and just oh, cuddle up with them. Number nine, fall returns every year. Thank goodness. Name an old favorite that you'd like to return to soon. So an old favorite of mine is The School for Good and Evil by Sonan Chainani. And I read this way back in middle school. And I didn't realize it was a series back then. I think maybe because it had recently come out so there weren't more books in the series. And I did not know what Goodreads was at the time. I know I did so much reading in middle school and I feel like if I knew what Goodreads was, I would actually be able to remember what I read in middle school. Anyway, um, but I believe the Scaredy Cat Readathon is using this as their group book for their readathon. And I now know that it's a series, and I would love to keep reading this series, especially since a Netflix adaptation is coming. I am so excited for that. So I desperately need to reread this book so I can finish the series, so I can watch the Netflix adaptation. And October is the perfect time to do it because this is all about stories and fairy tales and like it's not quite retellings because it's the idea that there is this town and every year two kids are taken from this town. And it is believed that these kids turn into fairy tales. And how that happens is one kid goes to school for good, and one kid goes to school for evil, and then they become princes and princesses or evil people, um, the villains in the story based off of their schooling. And then their stories get written down and those get distributed to the children in the original town. Now this book follows two characters and one believes that she is perfect, she is beautiful, she is going to be taken to be the princess and she is going to be saved by her prince and have a happily ever after. While the other one is just kind of like, I'm just trying to live through life here. Life is not easy. I, I'm just trying to make it through. So everyone believes that she's very dark and gloomy. It would be the perfect villain. Except that they actually go to the schools that they don't think they fit in. So the dark and gloomy person goes to, her name is Agatha. Oh, Agatha and Sophie. So Agatha, the dark and gloomy, ends up going to school for good, while Sophie, who believes she's going to be a princess, ends up getting into the school for evil. And they're very confused and they're like, what the heck, why? And that is the story. If you wanna know, you're gonna have to read it and find out. So definitely an old favorite that I severely need to revisit very soon. Definitely in the month of October, but it's hard. It'll be interesting though because I'm reading so many other things, but I will definitely make time for this. And it's it's a middle grade, so it'll read a little quicker. And I believe the font is pretty big in here. Yeah, it's not so bad. So definitely pick this up if you haven't already. Number 10, fall is the perfect time for cozy reading nights. Share your favorite cozy reading accessories. So I am like any other reader. I have my reading chair. I like to be wearing something comfy. Sometimes I like to drink something hot like tea or hot chocolate. Um, although I don't always do that because I'm just so paranoid of spilling on my books. Um, but recently, this year, I acquired something that I've been setting on my reading chair that I've been loving. And that is my cute little pumpkin pillow. I have been just curling up with this in a book almost every night and it makes me happy. It's super, super comfy, very like fall kind of spooky, but not too spooky. So this is definitely my new favorite accessory <laughs> for my reading chair. And then we are on to the last question, question number 11. And that is spread the autumn appreciation and tag some people. So I am obviously just going to be like, if anyone wants to do this tag, they are definitely welcome to. I am tagging you officially. Feel free to just do the tag and be like, Laura's Little Library tagged me and go right on ahead. Um, I don't think I will uh, <laughs> just because... I don't know, I don't know who all has already done their fall tag. Every time I see a finally fall tag pop up, I am saving it to my watch later list because I don't have time. Uh, so I know a bunch of people have done it, but if you haven't done it, please feel free to use this as your little nudge to go and do it. I am super excited. 
Thank you all so much for watching. I had a lot of fun doing this tag. Let me know some of your answers to this tag. And if, you, if you've done the tag and I haven't watched it yet, which is probably probable, uh, link it in a comment down below so that I can go and watch it and we can chat. Uh, otherwise, let me know what your favorite elements of fall are. And yeah, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I make new videos on Thursdays, but during spooky season, I am doing extra bonus videos like this one on Tuesdays. So, so yeah, subscribe and hit the bell to be notified so that you get the regular Thursday reading vlogs and the bonus videos on Tuesday. Otherwise, like the video if you are a fan of fall or autumn like I am. And yeah, until I see you all in the next video, I wish you a happy reading.